Our first guest has an Ivy League degree in funny, and since graduating from Harvard University, he's gone on to become one of the most in-demand comedians in New York City. That's right. And he's taking time out of his busy schedule to be with us today. Yay. Harrison Greenbaum, welcome to Arise 360. Hey, thanks for Harrison, having me. how are you? I'm good, so I'm you good. you average about 600 shows a year? Wow. My yeah. goodness, that's almost like two a day. How do you find the time to breathe? Yeah, exactly, barely. <laughs> barely. Uh, I might inhaler my back pocket. <laughs> just in case, right? Seriously, how do you keep up that pace? Uh, yeah, I just do, it's first of all, comedy is like an addiction to me, and so going right. on stage is like getting that hit of, of that drug, so yeah. two or three times a night is, is you know, what I, what I need to do. So you're a comedy crackhead. Exactly. <laughs> That's going on my website. Yeah. Well, is it addictive, though? <laughs> you know, I always wonder that when you hear the cheers and the laughter from the crowd, is it addictive? Like, you can't wait to get back on the stage? Yeah, I mean, there's this adrenaline rush. Yeah. Of mm. You're on stage, and it's just you and your words, and you're trying to get the audience to laugh, and it's a very exciting thing. It's sports for the people who don't play sports. I That's got true. you. I got you. So early on the show, we mentioned that uh, Snoop is going to have his own weed line. What do you think about that? <laughs> I mean, it's good marketing. I yeah. think that works. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, yeah. he should have a snack line that goes with it. <laughs> All right. oh, Snoop, yeah. Snoop Twinkies, Snoop <laughs> Chips. I mean, you might as well make a package out of it. Because you know you're going to have the munchies afterwards. Exactly. Right? Oh, true. Okay, so now I have to ask you, in a face-off, who would win? <laughs> a face-off and a bake-off. Who would win, Martha okay. Stewart or Bethany Frankel? I mean, Martha Stewart was in prison, so right? she's got That's some what skills. Said. Thank you. That's what yeah. I said. She might she... hide a shank in a pie. <laughs> we don't know. A shank in a pie? Absolutely. Apple shank. Okay. I love that. That's your recipe. You never know when you'll need it. Never know when you'll need a shame. <laughs> okay, so talk to us about how you got into comedy. And then you need to tell me about this Harvard comedy mafia. Right? Because you guys oh, are God. basically running things. I wish. No. Um, I actually started my own group at Harvard called the Harvard Stand-Up Comic Society. Right. So the acronym is Harvard Sucks. Um, <laughs> love that. So the school loved us. They love um, that. <laughs> um, but yeah, I graduated top of my class. And then, uh, you know, I sat my parents down. I was like, I have something very difficult to tell you. And they were like, like, you're gay. And I was like, no, no, I want to be a comedian. And they were like, we'd rather you be gay. Like, oh, is that damn. still an option on the table? Because <laughs> we'll go to the parade. We will go. It support you all the way. <laughs> yeah. As long They're as okay now. Comedian. They're okay now. So yeah. what happens when your parents spend a bazillion dollars to send you to Harvard and you tell them that you want to be a stand-up comic? Oh, they're like, when do they get over that? Right, right, right. Uh, I don't know if they ever do. Um, <laughs> but they must be so proud of you now. They're they're great now. Yeah, they're yeah. they're really great. I mean, super Jewy, awesome parents. <laughs> oh, goodness. But you actually super went to Harvard oh, yeah. and you were studying psychology, right? I was. So yeah. did that help you make up your routines? So you study people as they're walking down the street. Yeah. Well, I look at it almost like a real life psych experiment because you're getting all this real life data from your audience. So your data, oh. the, the, you're getting feedback in real time in terms of laughter, applause, and you could use that data to make your set as funny as possible. So you're diagnosing and assessing people the whole time you're doing exactly. the show. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Plus, I'm, I'm hanging out with comedians and they're all crazy, mm -hmm. so that, that comes in great material. That's true, that comes isn't in, it? Yeah, it comes in handy. It is true, they're all a little crazy. Yeah, we're all broken toys. But you seem very <laughs> sane. That's then I'm putting on a great mask. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> okay, Do you remember wait. your first joke? My first ever joke? Yeah, were you oh, that kid who's like, what did the chicken say to the like? <laughs> oh no, I was like such a goody two shoes. Oh, uh, really? I was like the goody two shoes valedictorian. Oh. I did mm -hmm. drum. I did magic as a kid. Really? Yeah, what I remember getting a call. Uh, like close up magic. I went to oh, magic okay. camp. You went to wow. magic camp? Oh, yeah. I remember like one of the weirdest <laughs> magic gigs. I got a call and they were like, Do you, you know, we have this great group for you. You're going to do magic. And I was like, What kind of group are they? They're like, They're deaf. Is that going to be a problem? Mm -hmm. And I was like, No, that sounds like the easiest magic show I will ever do. Okay. And I'm like, It was because I just had them pick cards. And I was okay. like, I'm going to turn around and you show everybody. And then my friend in the back just screamed out. <laughs> what cards they were holding. So it was it was good. They were pretty amazing. You were cheating. <laughs> That's magic. Oh, it I'm not a cheating. wizard. Oh my gosh. <laughs> do you incorporate magic into your act now? Once in a while. I mean mostly I do stand up, but I do have a separate sort of comedy and magic show that does incorporate it. So I, I vacillate between the two. Wait, did you ever have a period after graduating from Harvard where you didn't have a job because you were out there trying to be a comedian? It was like, okay, I got it. Do some magic at some kids' shows or something to fill some time. Once That's in a while, I would sneak off and do a bar mitzvah. So I always felt the way about magic for a long time, the way I think like a preschool teacher feels about her burlesque career. Right. Like they're just sneaking off in the middle of the night and like hopefully nobody catches them in pasties. Got like that's how I felt about magic. Right. Yeah. About magic. You've had a wide and varied career. But you used mm -hmm. to write for a late night show on Telemundo. I did. I how made tens work? and tens of dollars. Tens, and tens, and tens. tens. Yeah. Or pesos. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Right. How'd you land that gig? And explain to 
to us how that worked exactly. Well, I probably did something horrible in a past life. That's okay. probably how you land that writing gig. Um, but Did you yeah, write in Spanish? Or? I did. So were you See. fluent enough in Spanish to write a joke in Spanish? Uh, we would, well, I could, I basically, I would write it in English. Uh -huh. I was the head writer. We would assemble the script mostly in English. Mm -hmm. Then we would send it off and get translated. And I knew enough Spanish to be able to read the script and make sure oh. it was well translated. Got you. So uh, are yeah. you funnier in English or Spanish? <laughs> Way Translated. funnier in English. In English, right. Yeah. Like, that's not what I was trying to say. They translated it wrong. Yeah, their sense of humor is like, <laughs> like 10 or 20 years behind at least. Like, when we really? got the show, they were like, oh, yeah, we have un payaso de España, which means a clown. I thought they meant just like clown. Like, he clowns around, but right. he was like a honk, honk. Oh, all the Telemundo shows have, shoes. like, at least one clown. Oh, yeah. Like <laughs> and a, and a, an adult man dressed like a baby. There's oh, always, can't go there's wrong always with that. one adult man dressed like a baby. And he always has a belly. <laughs> oh, yeah. We have one here. No, I'm kidding. Well, so, uh, Matt, I don't know. Well, we don't, we don't know what he does in his free no, time. I do. That's why I said oh, okay. that. Right. <laughs> Mad Magazine. So it's still yes. around. Mad, oh, absolutely, okay, and still I'm, going strong. Okay, tell oh. me more about that, because yeah. I used to love Mad Magazine yeah. as a kid. Me too. Yeah. I, uh, when I was a kid, I used to visit my grandma uh, in her, the house my dad was raised in, and they had this, uh, this cardboard box filled with his old Mad Magazine collection. And I used to love it and read it, and uh, when I got older, there was like an internship that opened up for Mad Magazine. Really? And I was like, this would be the craziest thing. Like, my dad read it growing up, and now like mm -hmm. his son's going to go and write for the magazine. That's so and cool. it was comedy boot camp. You sit there for six weeks, and they're over your shoulder helping you write and that really pushed me into comedy because that was after my freshman year in college so it was really fun being part of the uh, the usual gang of idiots yeah well okay. we want to continue to follow the gang of idiots yeah. that you hang out with so tell us how we can follow you on social media yeah. absolutely I'm and on we Twitter see you on stage uh -huh. so. yeah. yeah at Harrison comedy is uh, my Twitter account yeah. uh, harrisongreenbaum.com is my website there's a, a link that says tour and you can find out where I'm touring and uh, when I'm in New York I'm at the comedy cellar regularly so check out their website we will as definitely well. check you out there next time you're there thank you so okay. much for joining us we appreciate thank you See you. Yes. Same here. And You're thank you time. guys for watching us today <laughs> and joining us here at Arise Entertainment yes. 360. We, we love you guys. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Bye. <laughs> You're great. Uh, thanks. We ran out of time. We have to go. Gotta go. Yeah, you